What's up, guys? Welcome back to What Are We Missing? We got a really special guest, another Michigan State commit, Theron Halleck. How are you doing today? Is that is that how you say your last name? Yeah. By the way? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm I got to ask. Heart. Yeah, I'm good, too. I'm good, too. I got to ask because I don't want to butcher people's names and continue to butcher them. But uh, I figured it was that. Well, I've, gotten so. a lot. I've gotten a lot. I've gotten Taryn. I got Tyrion. Um, I've yeah. even gotten Tyrion Halcock. I don't know. How people just it's a hard name to pronounce all i say is you got to put a th in front of aaron and that's how yeah. i say it. Oh, okay yeah that makes it easy that makes it easy yeah. cool so glad i glad i got it right but um i'm glad to have you on the show i'm glad our viewers and listeners get to to listen to just you and get to know who you are as a player and as a person off the floor sure. too um so yeah let's get right into it um senior season we kind of talked a little bit off off camera it's kind of a up and down year for you guys uh so yeah just talk to talk to me about about that yeah so I mean we have a good team we have a good bond um we just don't have that click yet and with some yeah. of our we have a really good conference we have East Grand Rapids Lowell uh Grand Rapids Christian Byron Center um okay what is a really good conference and my my team I'm like the only core basketball player um so it's tough because I like I said I have great teammates but we don't have that click yet and we struggle with some things and there's just those better teams out there that we compete with, but then we just take those tough L's and we just got to bounce back and do what we can. Um, we watch film, we try to do things to beat those teams, but we're doing okay. We're like, like you said, we're on a bit of a roller coaster right now, but um, we just don't have that clip that other teams do. So we're just trying to figure that out as we uh, finish out the season. Yeah, no doubt. And obviously nobody likes losing, but um, I guess, there's always a, a lesson in those losses. For sure. um, what do you What are you learning the most uh, during this season? Yeah, um, I don't know. I I used to have like the worst body language ever, um, mm. which I'm sure I'll talk about later on. And um, as the years go on, and as I've met a lot of um, very good people in my life, I have learned to not care about a loss and only learn from it. Yeah. Um, there's some times where I get emotional, but I mean that's just for my passion of the game. Yeah. Um, so I just learned to move on and watch my film and do what I can to make my game better. Man, body language. Yeah, that's that's huge. That's yeah. huge. Um, my coach in college, like, wouldn't even put us in the game if we had body, bad body language. Yeah. Um, not just on the floor, like on the bench, too. For sure. Um, yeah. If he looked at you and it's your time in the rotation, he would look right over you. Um, yeah. So yeah, body language is, is definitely important. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Can't wait to get into that a little later. Um, so yeah, let's talk about your story. I want to get to know you, you know, as a person, let's talk about your family, your upbringing, um, siblings, what, what's your family dynamic? Yeah. Like? So I'm the youngest know. of three. Uh, I have two older brothers, uh, Tanner and Tate. Tanner's the older one, Tate's the middle, and then I'm the youngest. Um, we're a Michigan state family. Okay. Uh, both of my parents went there. My dad went there for football in school, uh, ended up going in the NFL as well. Uh, my mom went there just for school. She probably could have been an athlete, but uh, she chose oh. to go there for just academics. Okay. Uh, Tanner, my older brother, was a preferred walk-on for the football team. Oh. And, uh, and now my uh, younger brother, um, Tate, is there right now and will be there when I'm there, and he's playing football as well. So we're, we're, we kind of spark blood in us. Um, yeah. we're, in, we're an athletic family. So. Oh, that's what's up. So let's go back to yeah. your mom. So what did she play in high school? Um, I think she did a little bit of everything. Uh, track basketball uh, I want to say volleyball too maybe here and there she was a good athlete I think that's my dad says that's where I get my speed from so yeah yeah man yeah so like seeing you play and I can definitely you know see that speed and athleticism that you have yeah. um and going to watch you train with Mertz um that one time like man I, you guys are doing one drill where you're like jumping over a box and like yeah. finishing. um yeah I'm like dang like that's not normal um right. the yeah. way you're doing it so yeah definitely a, a gifted gifted athlete for sure um sure. so only girl right yes in the family all right what so yep. what was that like uh growing up for you you know I've always thought about having a sister and just like kind of the girlier side of it but I honestly couldn't be more blessed to have two brothers I mean they shaped me to be a really good person. I'm strong, like I'm confident because of it. And I got that different protection. Um, I've had a lot of friends that have sisters and they're protective, but there's nothing like a brotherly bond. And just to see those two bond together too really shows me something. So I appreciate having two brothers. I have 
some of my girlfriends that are like sisters to me, but I definitely would be, I wouldn't, I would say I wouldn't really want a sister at this point just because my brothers are two of my best friends and people that I can always rely on. Oh yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Um, so I'm one of four. So I have an older sister. She's the oldest and my older brother than me than my little sister. Um, so me and my older brother kind of have that same relationship that you probably have um, with your brothers, with my little sister. Um, mm-hmm. I think we had that uh, effect on her with like athletics and stuff like that. Um, for sure. So yeah, I could definitely, definitely relate for sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming your, was it your parents that kind of got you into sports? How did you get into playing? Yeah, I think just with, again, like with my brothers, uh, looking up to them, I, they've always been in the sport life. So I kind of just followed in their footsteps. Um, I tried a little bit of everything when I was younger. I obviously did basketball, uh, soccer was another one of my core sports. I tried lacrosse. Uh, I never tried volleyball, which I regret. Um, mm. I even tried horseback riding. I danced a little bit. Wow. So I kind of got right into it. And I just think with my upbringing, that's just kind of how my life was going and we're gonna see if I liked it. And I ended up loving it. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool that you, you know, dibble dabbled in a lot of different things. Um, yeah. That's something I didn't really do. I mean, I played like basketball, football, baseball, I did track a little bit, but wish I would have tried other stuff. Um, so you regret volleyball. I yeah. kind of wish I would have played tennis really. Um, really? Yeah. At least a lot of my it. friends, tennis, they love it. They love yeah. it. Yeah. Um, you know, I played in gym class, um, in high school and I used to love playing tennis. Um, wish I would have played it, but, uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you tried a bunch of different sports. When did you realize like, yeah, basketball is, is my thing. Yeah. So soccer and basketball were my two main sports. Uh, I want to say when I was in fifth, sixth grade and then leading into middle school as well, I would go back and forth. Um, I'd have conflict after conflict and um, I just I loved both of them I didn't know I kind of leaned towards soccer when I was in younger ages Um, but then I was on like one of the better teams or the best teams for soccer and I didn't realize how demanding they were Mm. and I didn't like that and I had no I've had Noelle Brown as a coach since fifth grade okay and she was very flexible she never controlled what I did she was very open and honest with me and I would say she's had one of the biggest influences on me because of just the style of her coaching and the person she was. And I think that with her and just my love for basketball as well, led me to just basketball without having that other stressor and having those other conflicts. Wow. That's, that really hits home for me. Um, the way that you said that she's flexible. Um, cause I've had coaches where they only cared about their sport. Yeah. That's how soccer was. And I didn't like that. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, how big was that with uh, with Noel, with just like yeah, giving I, that freedom? I, yeah, I definitely think it was a very big freedom for me because I was like, you know, what, I'm gonna grind on basketball and see how this goes. And mm-hmm. Noel, I mean, there's not enough words to describe her. She is the, I mean, I'm sure you talked to Macy. She is the best. Um, mm-hmm. She puts all of her work and energy into her players, and she does everything she can to just make them a better player and a better person. And I couldn't be more thankful for her and I'm just blessed to have her as a coach and like a second mom that yeah. brought me into the sport I love and she pushed me every day to be better and she even helped me get where I am today so I'm very appreciative of her and she's just a good person like there, like I said yeah. there's no word that can describe her because there's just so many yeah that's so cool that's so cool um I've talked to her myself a little bit um and I can just I told Macy this I can just see the passion that she has for the game and for um the girls that she coaches um, and everybody else that's either been coached by her or has right. been around her says the same exact things. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I love that. And uh, Noel, if you're watching, I have a one year old daughter now. So uh, I'm going to start bringing her around. You know what I mean? Uh, so I'm about to get her connected with NBA because y'all uh, y'all just breed talent. Yeah. So it's the best place to be. It is the best place to be. For sure. No doubt. Um so you realized at, at that age, uh, basketball was your thing. When did you realize like D you're a D one caliber? Yeah. So I would say probably eighth or ninth grade, because that's when I kind of started to get recruited. Uh, GVSU Grand Valley was one of my first recruiters. Um, and they recruited me in middle school and we had coaches come here and there to our games and they were my first official offer. But then as I got that, um, more college coaches came to our games and it was a motivation for me. I was like, okay, I'm going to prove to every single one of these coaches that 
I'm going to get an offer from their school. Um, and I think right around freshman year, um, in the summertime when we do AAU, more coaches came and I was just like, okay, I'm going to get all these. And I got a couple offers in freshman year. And I think from the transition from uh, freshman to sophomore year summer, I was like, okay, I have potential here. Yeah. Um, so I think that's right around that time. And I think right around basically the start of high school is when I knew that I could have the potential of being a D1 athlete. Nice. Um, do you remember who your first offer was from? Yeah, Grand Valley. And then my bit, the uh, D1 oh, yeah. was uh, Western Michigan. Western, yeah, okay, cool. Um, so that's a good transition, talking about your commitment to MSU. You guys are an MSU family. Um, so was it that, like, a type of situation for you where you're just waiting for that that Michigan State offer, or were you kind of just a little bit. analyzing uh, all options? Yeah, Noel, I'll go back to Noel quick. She, when we first started about, like, recruiting, uh, she kind of sat down with every player and was like, okay, like, let's see what we can do here. Um, and she was like, we're going to get you to Michigan State. Mm. So I, every time I saw Susie or Kristen or Dean or Maria come to our games, I was like, okay, I'm going to prove my point here. Yeah. And when I got my offer in sophomore, junior year area, I was with my whole family and I sat in Susie's office and I had to grab, she had to grab Kleenex because when she offered me that scholarship, <laughs> I just like melted down and I was like, there's no way this is real. And I looked over and my parents were crying. My brothers were just smiling. And I, that was the one offer that I really wanted because it was my dream school. But I also yeah. waited a couple months to commit because I wanted to see if there were other Big Ten schools mm -hmm. um, that I wanted to come in and that I could get to know a little bit. But I would say the one I was waiting for was Michigan State, but I had to just give it a, a little bit more time. So I wanted to yeah. see if I could fix it a little bit, but that's for always sure. been my dream school. Man. So that is the one I want to look for. That's amazing. That's amazing. I'm sure that felt good and all the work that you put in to that moment to get that. So we really have two questions. The first one is yeah. whenever Michigan State came through, you wanted to prove your point. Um, and the second one is talk about the work that you put in, you know, leading up to that offer. So let's, yeah, first, let's talk about like you wanted to prove your point, right? whenever state came to watch a right. lot of people will probably be like, Oh, I just want to score 30 and impress yeah. them. Like, no, I, the points never matter to me. So, yeah. um, I would say just my effort and going back to my body language, just having that good body language, language, uh, excuse me. And I was always being a good teammate. I want to show them that I always have my teammates back and cheer them on. And I would die for every 50, 50 ball. I'd sprint up and down the floor. I'd get back and get those blocks. Like it was just the little things in the effort that mattered. And, if I scored 30 points, I'd be proud of myself. But if I got 20 rebounds instead, I'd be even happier. Uh, the oh, points yeah. that really mattered to me and I just attitude and effort is what I focused on. And I'm still working on it to this day. Um, but those are definitely my two biggest things in proving my point. Word. That's, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. And I hope whoever's watching and listening can, can learn from that. Um, so I played with a guy, I played with the Grand Rapids Storm, um, my 17 under year. Uh, so I played with a guy named Ben Simons. So yep. He was a six, seven shooter. Um, he ended up yeah. playing at Drake. Um, and we played at Vegas at, at nationals and he didn't play very well shooting wise. Um, he was missing, you know, a lot of shots, but he was keeping up with his body language. He was right. still playing with a lot of energy and um, coaches kept coming. Like Beeline was at his games. Michigan state was at, at the games and stuff like that. Um, yeah. As a 17 year old kid, I'm like, man, he's, he's not playing very well. Like, why are, they, why are these coaches continue to come? Mm -hmm. But as I continue to think about it, he was doing other stuff. Um, and then like talking to coach Martin, he's like, yeah, like coaches can see he's six, seven. He's got a great, great shooting for him. They understand that he's probably in a shooting slump. They seen mm -hmm. him play before they heard about him. Um, but he's doing other stuff to, right. you know, get noticed. So Right. I think it's important to for kids to know is more than just sports or not sports. It's more than just uh buckets. So yeah, for sure. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. So yeah, so the second part of my question was talk about the work that you put in mornings, nights, what whatever, um sure. on your own. Yeah. So on my own, I'd get in the gym. Um, our men's basketball coach uh at Force Hill Central would I think junior year is when I went in the most is um, 
he'd let me in at like before school and I'd get some shots up and just kind of get a little bit of cardio in. And I also got to give a uh, shout out to Mercy Klein and Andy Secor. Mm-hmm. They have really helped me. And uh, I've been with Mercy since I was in little, like I have a video on my phone of me with my shorts down my ankles. Like I was so young. <laughs> um, so she's had a huge impact on me and she's got helped me with who I am as a person and the player. And I never thought I'd be a point guard. I'd always thought I'd be like a three, four, Mm-hmm. just because I was kind of built like that. And that's how Noel put me at, at first. But then I slowly started to get in the guard position and Mercy helped me throughout that. Yeah. And I just I just stuck to my program. I kept doing the workouts I needed to do. I got in the gym by myself um, and I never gave up. Mm-hmm. So I think that's what really helped me get where I am. Man. Yeah, sticking to the, really sticking to the script. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's definitely key. So yeah, I love that. Um, so more about your, your Michigan state selection or your commitment. Um, what about MSU that, you know, besides being a fan, being a Michigan state family, what else about the school, um, attracted you to them? Yeah. So, I mean, the first time I've ever gone or been on that campus, it felt like home with my family or without my family. I mean, people say, oh, you committed to Michigan state because your family, I'm like, yeah, that might be a little bit about it, but that's not what really was important to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's cool that we have a legacy that goes on, but I also think that the best feeling about that is I feel home there. And uh, my dad has always said to me, you got to surround yourself with good people. Right. <clears throat> and Michigan State has the best people that I've ever met. I have, I'm, I'm not even on the team yet, and I can already tell you that two of the girls on that team that I'll play with for one or two years are already my best friends. Wow. So it's just the, the people side of it. Uh, and Abby Kimball will tell you the same thing. There's just great people in Abby, Tori, and Tori, uh, Osma and Julia A. Raul, two of the players on the team. Okay. And we literally have a group chat with Abby, myself, and those two. And we hang out all the time. And mm-hmm. they FaceTime me randomly, check on me how I'm doing. And the coaches are awesome. It's just, it is a people place. And that's where I want to be. Yeah, for sure. I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> and then I know you're good friends with Abby. Mm -hmm. um so talk about how that is being able to play with her for an extended few years you know we played each other this year and uh it was tough because she's got a (laughs) good team and my team is good but we're just not like I said we don't have that click um and uh, people always look at that game as who's the better Michigan State commit right um but Abby and I have never looked at it that way we Mm -hmm. I mean we didn't like playing against each other but that was our game to show each other how hard we push each other. Mm-hmm. And Abby and I have always been very competitive, but we've never been in a competitive point to where we went at each other. Mm-hmm. We would build each other up and we'd push each other. And uh, to be best friends out outside of the court as well helps because we're always there for each other. We have someone who we can rely on and someone that we can trust and know that we'll make sure we're up in the morning for an early lift or yeah, rely on them to do this and that. And it's just, I'm so excited to play with her because one, we don't have to really compete for a spot either. She's more of a shooter where I'm more of kind of like a guard, like two, three kind of position. And she's just, she's just shooter and a guard. So Mm -hmm. even if we did compete for a spot, we'd still push each other. Like it's not who's better, who's this, who's that. It's just make sure we have each other's back and to push each other as hard as we can. No doubt. No doubt. Um, And I think that's what real friends do. Um, Push each other in the right direction, make each other better, Um, not hold each other back. So, um, I know, shoot, freshman year, so I played at GV. Um, so being a freshman is not easy. Yeah. And having that friend, that roommate, that right. person that you're closest to is super, super important. So yeah. um, that guy for me was Nick Carreri. We're still boys today. Um, yeah. So there are many a days that we just, man, we just didn't want to do sure. anything. Yeah. But right. we had each other. We had each other. Um, we had this one thing. If he's watching, he'll crack up. But like we had like what six thirty a.m. workouts, and right. um, when that alarm went off, we would like turn over, put our face in the pillow, and just yeah. scream, scream as loud as right. we could, just like yeah. just to get it out. Yeah. But after that, like we, like, all right, man, you ready? Let's do it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, having that that person with you on your side, um, pushing you, that's gonna be key for you next year. Yeah. for sure yeah yeah um so 
yeah, let's talk about maybe maybe some challenging things um, that you went through in the recruiting process. Yeah. Um, does anything stick out to you there? You know, I, I'm going to go back to the body language thing. Um, yeah. I used to have, I used to get frustrated if my pass went out, if I missed a shot, I'd hang my head mm-hmm. high. And mm-hmm. um, that was the one thing that, that I needed to work on for the recruiting process. That was my biggest struggle. Um, yeah. It was never hard for me to talk to a coach. Um, I, I mean, obviously you're going to get a little bit of nerves, but yeah, I guess playing in front of them and the overthinking and just the body language part of it, I, I would struggle with. And mm. I, I mean, I still to stay. I'm not, I'm never going to be perfect, but that's the one thing that I'm always going to work on. And I just need to let go of if I make a bad player and make a mistake and I just need to let that go away and keep, continue to play my game. And I think that's what I struggled with when I was younger, which, I mean, I was younger. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what recruiting was, right. um, but I look back now and I'm proud of this, myself and how I overcame all that um, adversity. And I'm just, it's hard for a younger kid to go through the body language stage, but mm-hmm. I definitely am proud of myself for that. And I think uh, the recruiting process helped me with that as well. For sure. Would you say that um, the body language thing is something that you had to like practice and, and master over time? If so, yeah. what, like, what did you do to, to help you with that? Um, sometimes like in practice, I would just focus on if my teammates dropped a pass or I made a, like a bad, a bad pass. I would just be like, mm-hmm. okay, you got to get through it. Um, mm-hmm. sometimes I'd have to like fake my happiness, like yeah. to just like emphasize that I needed to cheer on my teammates instead of make them bring it down. Because if I got down, then they would get down. Right. So I just focused on really pushing that positivity and not letting anyone down because I never want to let anyone down I'm like the most unselfish person out there Mm -hmm. so I want everyone else to be happy and in order for them to be happy I got to be happy too no doubt agree 100 percent um yeah when I watch games on tv like I'm sure you've seen when somebody turns the ball over they just start like smiling or or laughing yeah um I used to be like why are you why are you smiling like this this is serious but no, like they're probably practicing good body language. Like, yeah, that, yeah, oh, that's a, that's actually my practice this year. Is if yeah. I do, if I make a mistake or my teammates make a mistake, I give a. I what I do is I just take a really quick deep breath. Um, that's not obvious that I'm a little frustrated, but I mean I'm gonna be frustrated. But then I turn around mm-hmm. and smile, and give them a high five, and I'm like, let's get back, let's do this. Thing. Absolutely, absolutely. So. Because when you give in to whatever negative situation happens, right, it's kind of like a snowball effect. Um. And then just starts tumbling down. So, right. yeah, I I think I think you're on to something for sure. Um, so you talked about some people that were influential to you. You talked about your trainers. Um, is anybody else um really influential in this in this process uh, for you? Yeah, um, I'm gonna have to go back to my family. Uh, mm-hmm. They're my day ones, and I've never questioned them, and they've never questioned me, and I rely on them every day. They're all my family, my best friends, and I wouldn't be where I am today without them. Um, My brothers, they're, I mean, just the two most genuine people and they're kind of opposites. Tanner's more of a social guy and Tate's kind of like a quiet, angry worker that gets to work and grind. Um, And so just to have those two impacting and influencing my life every day has really shaped me to be a better person. And my dad and my mom are just, I mean, I'll brag about my family every day. They're just good people. They have great big hearts and that has had the biggest impact to me as an athlete because I go and do those same things that they do to me to my teammates and my coaches and pay the same respect and on the court too I have very good sportsmanship I work hard I grind Mm -hmm. I'm a good person so I would say my family definitely has the biggest impact and they're the most influencing to me that's amazing that's amazing um yeah family is is so important for sure Mm -hmm. um I could say the same about mine um, I hope my daughter's like you one day where she can say the same thing. <laughs> I appreciate um, that. Yeah. So I'm sure she will be. She, she just sounds like she's going to be the athlete. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's already so active. It's, it's crazy. There you go. Yeah. Um, I call her determined. So if she wants to climb on something, she'll do it. Yeah. If she, right. if she wants to get somewhere, she will. So yeah, yeah we're sure. going to we're going to harness that energy in the in the right direction. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um. So let's touch on a little bit more on adversity. Yeah. Um, Cause I know how really in life, in sports, adversity is really the, one of the only things that is guaranteed. Like you're going to go through 
hard stuff. So how important do you think it is for athletes and just people in general to, you know, build these skills and fighting against adversity? Yeah, um, I think it's really important. Um, it's never going to be perfect and life itself or the sport that you're passionate for is never going to be perfect. And you're going to have to get through that roller coaster of stages that might come more than often. But I think it's really important to get over those difficulties and that adversity because not only will it shape you to be a better person yeah. and an athlete, it will impact your life and it will put you on that route that you're supposed to be on. And I think that's super important because you'll be more of a confident and strong person. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, I'm, I'm sure if you haven't been in this position already, you, you will be one day. When I was started interviewing for jobs after college, all I could talk about was like my athletic experience. Right. Um, and yeah. And like people would ask me about challenges I've been through. It's like, oh, dang, all I can think about is is basketball sure. and like yeah. what I did to, to fight through that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, adversity, you'll you'll experience it everywhere. And I think sports is the greatest um, right. thing to, to teach you, to teach you uh, right. how to get through adversity. Mm -hmm. um, so do you have any stories of maybe how like a coach um, kind of puts you through adversity on purpose, maybe in a practice setting or conditioning? Yeah, um, I think even going back to like when I had to decide through soccer and basketball, yeah. uh, I think that put a lot of difficulties in adversity in my life because I had to choose what route I wanted to go on. Mm. Um, and I think deep down, Noelle was being really flexible, but I think at the same time, she was also was giving me a challenge to be like, hey, I got your back, girl. Like, we can get through this together. And um, I think just with ha like a, having a bad game or having a tough practice or not walking on gym, like I did work my hardest. Um, I came back to my body language and I was like, you know what? You got to get over it. It's you're not yeah. going like, to hang your head high and get mad about it for days when you can move on in a second and just make it better the next time. So I think with having Noel there again, I'm going to go back to her. She just she put me through a lot in a positive way. Yeah. And she did that because she knew that I could handle the situation and that it will only make me stronger and confident. Mm -hmm. And I'm beyond blessed for that because she made me a better person. And I think that going through that stage of one, choosing basketball and two, having her with her own daughters as well, with Liv, Jalen, Macy, who are incredible athletes and incredible people. Um, she knows how to make that push and she knows how to yeah. do the extra stuff in order to make us better and to go through those tough times. And even most importantly, she's there through the tough times and she, she knows about it because she's had her own experience. Right, right. So to me, it sounds like she orchestrates those situations, but is also there for you kind of through those situations, yeah, sure. kind of guiding you through that yeah. um, nurturing. I think that's very key that a lot of coaches miss out on. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of coaches kind of throw you out there right? and watch you crash and burn mm -hmm. and then like scream and yell at you, Yeah, you know, calling you soft or calling you all types of names. Like right. that kills your confidence a little bit. It does. Um, have you ever been in that situation? Um, I can't think of a sp specific example, but I've definitely felt that before. Yeah. Um, just feeling like, God, I'm weak or I'm unconfident mm -hmm. and, um, I honestly specifically think I, it was my shot. I uh, never really was like a true shooter. Like Abby's like a true shooter. Yeah. Um, she makes like almost all of her shots at all times. Cause she, that's just her thing. That's what um, she does. She's very good at the rest too. Yeah. But, um, I think I would always hang my head because I wasn't a good shooter and I would always get mm -hmm. down to myself and be like, God, you're not confident at all. Yeah. Uh, but then I would just fight through it and keep shooting. And, um, Andy Seacor, shout out to him. He, for make shots he has helped me with i've been with him for the past two-ish years and my okay. shot and confidence has already gotten way better and i yeah. don't i couldn't care less if i airballed i airballed last night a couple times and i was like you know what smile keeps going i'm just gonna keep shooting and drive to the hoop and get yeah. back out to the three uh, so i think the confidence thing definitely was i lacked it a little bit but i definitely came over that adversity and that's what the most important part of it is absolutely um yeah i follow andy um on Twitter and on Instagram. And I absolutely love what he's doing. Um, yeah. I, would, I would love to have him on here one day to, to pick his brain, but what are some of the best things that you've, you've learned from him after working with him for a couple of years? Yeah. Um, I never really realized how deep you can go into a shot. Mm -hmm. uh, he is dedicated. He watches 
I don't, I don't even know how many he has of us. He get 14, I don't know, 15, maybe 16 of us um, in his little core group. Yeah. And he watches every single one of our films. Yeah. He goes through and has every single one of our chart shot charts. He has our percentages. Um, he texts us after a bad game or a good game and tells us, hey, move on from it. Or he has specific sayings for each and every one of us. Yeah. Uh, he just uh, he just shows dedication and he shows care. And he's just such a good guy and coach on top of it that it helps with the confidence thing. And even when like I was going through a tough time of shooting, he was like, all right, let's think of things that you could tell yourself when you're in a bad game. Um, so you, you just know that he cares and outside of shooting that he's going to have your back as well. And with shooting, he just puts all his time and effort into you in our core group. And he even does like camps for other schools too. Like he'll go out of his way and uh, get with high school or I'm, I'm assuming some college players or whatever he does um, outside yeah. of it. And just, he just shows dedication. And that's yeah. super important because that's what players want and need is to get that love and that care from coaches. And he definitely shows that. And he's just, he's just awesome. I love that. I love that. Shout out to Andy and yeah. make shots. Um, yeah. That love and that care, the nurturing where I talked about Noel too. Um, yeah. I think that's important. That's important. Like some, some yeah. players, some players love the, you know, getting yelled at, getting, yeah. you know, you know, cursed at, screamed at. Some players right. like that. Some players need it. Some players yeah. need need that nurturing side too. Um, so and I was I was one of those players as well. But uh man, yeah, shout out to Andy. I can definitely see the the passion that he has. Yeah. Um not just for sports for for, for the youth too, because he works yeah. in education, I believe. Yep. Um so yeah, he he's definitely, you know, making his mark. Mm -hmm. um really on this earth so that's what's up um man i feel like we're answering questions like before even asking them yeah um, so what advice would you give to players um that are going through a tough situation maybe in the moment or maybe like a long stretch yeah. uh, maybe a shooting slump losing streak yeah, I would say never doubt yourself. Um, you're gonna go through those roller coasters and those tough times and they're gonna shape you to be a better person. Um, I just say never give up, you gotta fight. Um, if this is what you're passionate about, you'll, you'll know from the adversity that if you can get through it, that this is what you love and that you can do it and that you're a strong person. But yeah. if you struggle and you kind of are like, hey, I don't know if I wanna do this, like you have a choice of giving up, which is never the best option, or you can get through that and find your love and play your game and be you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Be you. Never doubt yourself. Yep. Yeah. That's good advice right there. Um good interview, yo. That was awesome good stuff. I appreciate that. I I'm yeah. glad I could be on here. It means a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad to have you. Um and like, man, I hope to have you again one day. Yeah, um, for sure. Especially when you're at state to kind of catch up. Yeah. Um before we end things, we like to yeah. end with uh, quick hitters. So just some yeah. like fun, fun questions. Um, so the listeners and viewers can get to know you a little bit too. Um, so the first one is your favorite basketball player of all time. So it could be guys and girls side. Okay, I'll do I'll do both. Okay. Um, for boys, I'll probably say MJ or Kobe. Okay. Just because I mean, they're, Everyone knows them. They're the most influ two of the most influential players. Uh, for girls, I gotta say uh, Ariel Powers, the okay. Spartan dog. Uh, yeah. She went through, and uh, she, I always see her post, and I watch her game, and she's a high IQ, and she's a beast. Mm. So I'd say both, all three of those are three of my favorite, and yeah, fun to watch. So okay, yeah, that's what's up. Um, speaking of Spartan dog, uh, so one of my friends, she used to be a realtor, helped me help me buy my previous house she played yeah. basketball at michigan state Alyssa right. Han. um so she actually played at granville okay um and then she played at michigan state back in like let me say like 06 through 2010 or maybe 07 something like that yeah but yeah you might see you might have seen pictures of, of her um mm -hmm. around around um the facilities but yeah. um so kobe kobe um yeah. man so we just came on two years right in passing what was that like for you um when you heard about his passing yeah um it was heartbreaking mm -hmm. um it's very emotional 
not for me, but our whole world. Um, and that yeah. just showed right there that it wasn't just about his style of play. Right. And it was about his pers- personality and the way he wanted to be for, especially his daughters. And I mean, my heart's out for his, him and his family. Uh, yeah. Gigi as well. I mean, that's just, it's awful. And um, it definitely gave a message to our whole world that it's not just about the sport. Um, right. It's about how you want to be as a person, how you want to make an impact on the world. And I think when I found out that they'd pass, I, it just hurt me down. And I was like, you know what? We're all going to grind and we're all going to work like Kobe did. Yeah. Uh, and there's a reason why people are shooting a shot and saying Kobe. Yeah, um, exactly. And I mean, that just shows you right there. And I just think that it's hard, to, hard as it is to think that he's gone. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't think about those negativities that he is gone. And we need to focus on more of the positivities and what he did. Yeah. Um, and how he impacted our world and it, it was heartbreaking but um it was Absolutely. just he was an incredible player to look up to and no doubt and his daughter as well she was going to be good and Man. she she you, you you see like you the uconn stuff that they did for her um yeah. and all the um money that was donated and all those things like that's just how you know that they were good athletes and good people right man yeah Whew. yeah that's tough mm-hmm. um yeah like you said she or kobe yeah, left a, a huge legacy. Um, I'm reading this book right now, uh, The Mama Mentality book. Yeah. And he's really just like breaking everything down, how he trained, how he got ready for games, right? Um, how he just prepared for things. And man, it was just so specific and so, I don't want to say tedious, but I mean, that's just made him who he was. Right. Um, and he... I feel like every chapter he encouraged the readers to do what he does or like have that mindset, not just in basketball, but in anything that they choose. Yeah. Um, and he always, and he said like, if you want to be great at something, you got to sacrifice other parts of your life. Um, mm-hmm. And that's your family. That's fun stuff that you want to do. That's yeah. man, anything. So let's talk real quick about like your, sacrifice so yeah I kind of I kind of lived the AAU life and, and stuff right. like that and missing time with friends so what types of things that did you have to sacrifice to get to yeah uh, my friends I don't know if I've listened to this but they definitely got frustrated because I'd be like hey I I can't hang out I got a tournament I got practice I got uh training whatever um yep. and that was definitely an adjustment because I mean I love hanging out with my friends but mm. I also knew that if I wanted to be the best player I could be and I wanted to get in that spot to where I would go to Michigan State or was D1 that I needed to put every single ounce of extra work in. Um, And that was hard because I missed out on some fun opportunities like going to Grand Haven or something like fun like that or going swimming or whatever they were doing. And I wish I could have been there, but at the same time, I have zero regrets regrets in any of my actions. I I did what I needed to do and I'm at the place where I need to be now and I'm still going to have to go through those sacrifices. Yep. But now my friends are more understanding about that. Me and my family too. People know what I want and people know where I'm going to get. Absolutely. So they understand. I think that sacrifices are hard, but we got to get through them too. Yep. No doubt. No doubt. That's good. That's good that you have people on your side that, that understand. Because um, it makes it really hard when people don't understand. Right. Um, yeah. So for sure. you definitely need that. Man. Okay. Yeah. Man, Kobe. I could talk about Kobe all we can I'm make a whole him. episode about Kobe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, here's a fun one. So what's your pregame snack or meal? Um, lately, I've been going or having like a sub or a sandwich mm-hmm. just to get like some carbs and some energy in me. Um, but the one thing I always have before a game or during a game, both maybe, is a Pedialyte. I okay. keep myself hydrated. Yeah. Um, so I got to make sure I'm on top of that. I usually have like the packets that I can just pour in the water or I just have like mm-hmm. a big jug of it. Um, that's like the one thing that yeah. I always have is for hydration, but sometimes my food fluctuates a little bit. I'll mm-hmm. maybe get Panera one time, but I usually stick to like the sandwich or protein side of things. Yeah. Okay. That's what's up. Um, I don't know if you saw Macy, her episode, but she was yeah. saying how she ate like steak and broccoli or yeah um so it's funny um the day after a couple days after the episode dropped i went to an egr game um to watch macy and noel flagged me down she's like hey let me show you something and it was like a picture of her uh her pregame meal 
Yeah. She's like, yeah. So she she yeah, she proved yeah. it. So that was that yeah, was kind of funny. For sure. <laughs> um, all right, favorite shooter hoop in. Um, I think I have Paul George's right now, and those are really nice. Um, mm. and then I also have had Kyrie's in the past. I think those are my two favorite shoes just because they're comfortable. Um, yeah. I don't really care how the shoe looks. I'm not really about like, oh, hey, look at my shoes. It's more yeah. about the comfort. And um, I think those are two of my favorites so far. Right. Okay. Yeah. A lot of a lot of y'all are saying Kyrie or PG. Um, yeah. One thing, I, one thing I noticed about this, I guess, generation of hoopers today. Mm-hmm. Um, so when, back in my day, I sound old. So when I hoop, like it was cool to match your yeah your shoes with your uniform right but yeah. I don't really see that today is that like still a, is that still a thing or is it more like you know like- I don't know uh I think people definitely like the look of the no match because they want to get that attention and yeah uh, some of them are brighter than others but right, I've always right. been kind of like a match or like neutral color kind of thing right. so I'm with right. you on that one um we yeah. had NBA we, we've always been uh black blue and a little bit of orange whitish um okay. and there was one shoe that we got that was like white with gold and it didn't really go with our uniform but as a team it looked good yeah so I'm, i've always been a kind of about matchy matchy just because i have a little bit of ocd in there yeah uh, so i don't know what other people do but i think that they see a cool shoe and they're like hey i'm gonna get this no matter what if it matches or not no doubt no doubt um yeah so i was i'm the same i either wanted to match or just wear black shoes, black yeah. socks. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like the Fab Five. Um, but yeah, favorite shoe. All right, last question: Who should be on the show next? Yeah, um, I think as an adult perspective, you should get Andy Secor at some point, which is said. All right. Um, yeah. Two players that I think that I even wrote down. Um, I don't know if you've interviewed Allie Carlson yet. I couldn't no. remember. Uh, no. she's, yeah, I know you know her, uh, teammate yeah. base, uh, and then yep. McKenna Ferguson, okay. she's from Byron. Uh, she's also yeah. one of my best friends. I know her well. That's we're Andy Secord. We trained at her house cause she's a gym. Yeah. Um, but she's really good and she's strong and she's in the recruiting process too right now. So, okay. uh, she would probably give you good feedback and she's just a good person too. So I think those two girls she's are a gym in her house. Yeah. It's like attached. Like I literally go there. That's like our main place for make shots she's like a little like half court gym and it's like you if you go on to andy's twitter and you see like gray yeah. wall that's her gym at her house wow yeah man that's the kid's dream right there yeah i know you should get her on zoom and have her give you a little tour of it yeah yeah might yeah. have to do that might have to yeah do that. cool good uh yeah yeah i'll definitely reach out to all of them no doubt yeah um so yeah i'm looking forward to that but Darren, I appreciate you. Um, man, good stuff. Great interview. A lot of Thank knowledge. I learned a lot from you. Not, you know. Um, I appreciate that. I appreciate you having me on here. It means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully we'll do it again one day. Yeah, but uh, sure. good luck to you. Good luck to you the rest of uh, the way this season. When do you play next? Uh, I think we I, we might have EGR next, if I remember right, on okay. Tuesday. Um, but either way, I mean, like I said, we have a tough conference, so it's going to be it a fun way to end the season and end my high school careers knowing that we played good teams. So, word, word. Yeah. Cool, cool. All right, there. appreciate you. Um, great interview again. Um, Thanks. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, another episode. That's a wrap. That's episode 11. I can't believe we're episode 11. It's wild. That's awesome. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching and listening. Uh, make sure you guys share this episode out and uh, continue to spread, spread the word. All right. Till next time. Peace.